Welcome to Sensible Transfers, the video series in which we make transfer suggestions that suit the style of the club that we are discussing. If you're unfamiliar with the rules or methodology, you can watch our Sensible Transfers rules video as linked below. Today's club is Arsenal. Mikel Arteta has only just taken over at Arsenal in real terms. He's played four games at the time of writing this video, overseeing wins against Manchester United and Leeds United, drawing against Bournemouth and losing to Chelsea. That makes it tough to say much about how Arteta might want to set Arsenal up tactically, but we can infer two main things from his matches in charge so far. He likes a 4-2-3-1, and he likes to push the left-back higher and tuck the right-back inside to make a third defensive midfielder, an inverted full-back if you like. He's likely to favour a possession-based approach with fluid positional interchange between players, but Arsenal are a bit of a mess at the moment and it will take time for him to show his real coaching philosophy. So, where do Arsenal need to strengthen? Well, probably not up front, where Alexandre Lacazette and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang are both good players, even if fitting them in together is tricky. Nicolas Pepe has looked good in bursts, while Gabriel Martinelli is an exciting prospect. In attacking central midfield, Arsenal have Mesut Ozil and a number of prospects who should all get a chance to impress should Arteta keep the 4-2-3-1. Fullback is a tricky area because Kieran Tierney is a good prospect but who's had injury issues, while Saeed Kolasinac is offensively good but defensively quite shaky. On the other flank, Hector Bellerin has again barely featured because of injury, while Ainsley Maitland-Niles is probably a stopgap, but Arteta's inverted fullback move on the right could suit him. We've therefore identified defensive central midfield and centre-back as the most pressing areas of concern. We've looked for players 27 or under who've racked up more than 700 minutes so that there's a reasonable data set and each player is either entering their peak or is still a prospect. It's always trickier mid-season, so we've adjusted minutes played down from our summer benchmark. These players could be useful pickups for January, but they should also be considered long-term options. Arsenal are in a building cycle again, so that should be factored in. Now, Arsenal don't want a purely destructive midfielder, especially if Arteta persists with the 4-2-3-1. Both axes in a double pivot need to be able to do something with the ball, especially against good pressing teams who can tie up the more creative passer. There's actually a good argument that given Arsenal's midfield options to deploy a 4-3-3, flanking a destroyer with Matteo Guendouzi and Lucas Torreira, but so far Arteta seems to prefer using Meza Ozil as a 10. So, we've looked for midfielders who show up defensively well, but are able to use the ball too. That's why some good defensive midfielders in the Premier League, like Philip Billing, Marvellous Nakamba and Tom Tribal have been discounted. They don't currently show enough with the ball. We looked at a few other options, all of whom could do a good job, but with caveats. Torino's Daniele Baselli, at the top end of our age bracket at 27, Hoffenheim's Florian Grilic and RB Leipzig's Konrad Lehmer, both potentially expensive and more likely to move to a Bundesliga side. But in the end though, two players stood out. Firstly, a raw but nonetheless persuasive option is Luavra's Pape Gay. He's only 20, 6 foot 2 in height and has huge potential. In terms of passing, for Ligue 2 players under 28, he's 8th for through passes with 1.5 per 90, 4th for passes to the final third with 11.1 per 90 and 25th for progressive passes with 9.4 per 90. Those above him are mostly defenders who tend to rack up better progressive passing numbers. Defensively, he manages 6.6 .6 interceptions per 90, adjusted for opposition possession, 6.9 defensive duels per 90, and he's second for percentage of aerial duels won among League 2 midfielders we considered. The numbers only tell some of the story, of course. Watching Gay, it's clear that he has huge talent. He's always looking to progress the ball, he turns with it well, he has the skill and strength to shield it, and he can pass well with both feet. He's dynamic and has an intelligent range of passing. Under the experienced coach Paul Le Guin, who won Liga three times with Lyon, Gay is developing well and should become a genuinely dominant midfielder for a Premier League side to build around. But our choice is Toulouse's Ibrahim Sangare, who's 22 and 6 foot 3. He's made 11.1 final third passes per 90, seventh of all the midfielders in Europe's top five leagues considered by age and minutes played. He's also made 2.2 passes to the penalty area per 90 and 1.5 through passes per 90. Defensively, he's winning 8.2 duels per 90, which puts him 27th on the top 5 midfielders we looked at, but combining this with creativity, he's outperforming the rest of that group, with the exception of Marco Verratti and Jerzy Kimmich, both different kinds of players in very dominant sides. Even for deep completed passes, he's up there. 
On that list, sorted by defensive ability, only Casemiro, Verratti, Konrad Lehmer, Florian Grilich, and Pierre-Emile Hoiberg, who would also be an interesting signing for Arsenal, managed to find their teammates in dangerous areas more. Sangare is very quick and covers the defender's left back well, which would be useful in Arteta's setup. He looks slightly less comfortable on the ball than Gay, but he's a more dynamic defender, has more experience at a higher level, and is closer to being the finished article. But that's why he'd cost significantly more. So it's a rather boring assertion by now, but Arsenal still need a centre back. At least one, possibly two. Now, of course, William Saliba is on loan at Saint Etienne, where he was purchased from, but he's not been a regular player by any means due to his injury issues. In the four league games he's played the full match, Saint Etienne managed three wins and one draw and three clean sheets. Saliba has played on the right of a three man back line, impressing with his positioning and defensive abilities, but a loan spell that was supposed to continue his development has been frustratingly hampered by those injuries. So it's very hard to say if he's going to be the kind of dominant defensive presence Arsenal need next season. He's of course an excellent prospect though, and Arsenal should be pleased to have secured his services. Now, the good young centre-backs in Europe, players like Deo Pamecano, Nico Elvedi, Felix Iduokai, and Stefan Posh, who we recommended for Arsenal last season, should still be all under consideration, especially Posh, though Upamecano is likely out of Arsenal's price range. But there are other intriguing prospects. 22-year-old Kevin Schlotterbeck has managed just over 700 minutes for a surprisingly successful Union Berlin side, but looks like an accomplished defender, albeit with a bad disciplinary record, with one red and three yellows in that limited sample of minutes. Another St Etienne product, 19-year-old Wesley Fofana, has similarly limited game time, but is making 10.4 successful defensive duels per 90 and winning 70% of his seven aerial duels per 90. But Arsenal need someone more experienced, ideally in the 24 to 27 age range, who can challenge Socrates and David Luiz, or just replace them, defensively solid, especially aerially, and with a decent range of passing. Alexander Diku of RC Strasbourg is an intriguing possibility. He's played as a defensive midfielder, as well as a centre back in both a back four and a back three, so he's versatile. Six foot tall, left footed and 25 years old, Diku is part of an RC Strasbourg side punching well above their weight under coach Thierry Loret. Diku makes just under nine successful defensive duels per 90 and wins 68% of his 4.4 aerial duels per 90. His interceptions numbers are relatively low, but RC are a league average pressing side and Diku is able to adjust and be more aggressive as a defensive midfielder, so he would likely be able to play in a more front foot defending side if required. He's not the most adventurous passer, high in volume but low in progressions, but RC's defence are conservative passers generally, preferring to give the ball to keeper Matt Zells or midfielder Dimitri Leonard to hit long. Diku is one of three RC Salzburg players we really like, along with 22-year-old fullback Anthony Kachi and Mohamed Samarkin, a 19-year-old centre-back. Arsenal might do well to acquire several of them. Our pick, however, is 27-year-old Austrian Martin Hinteregger of Eintracht Frankfurt. He's six foot tall, quick enough, and possesses a good all-round game with six league goals and one assist to go with his 8.4 successful defensive duels per 90 and 4.9 aerial duels won at 61%. He's a front foot defender, in line with Eintracht's high tempo aggressive style, making 7.5 interceptions per 90. This approach does mean he gets caught out sometimes, and Eintracht can look flimsy out wide. So as a left-sided centre back in a three, he's constantly being drawn that way. However, in a more disciplined back four, these issues should be smoothed out. He's not afraid to carry the ball, making 1.8 dribbles per 90 at a success rate of 45%, and he also makes 8.1 final third passes, 1.4 passes to the penalty area, and 11.6 progressive passes all per 90. From an all-around perspective then, he ticks a number of boxes. Experienced, old enough to lead the defence without being past his peak, defensively strong and capable of moving the ball forwards, and chipping in with goals. He's not a glamour signing, but then Arsenal needs solidity over sparkle at the back, and Hinteregger would be an upgrade on their existing options and bring a variety of skills to the side. And here is how the team could line up, showing several options. 